brought up uh, our driver. Uh, we had the same driver coming back uh, from the airport. We arrived at different times. And our driver, Bob, a wonderful man, uh, was probing in the car. And he began to ask me, well, are you a constitutional conservative? And I had my answer for that, but I'd like you to, are you a constitutional conservative? Well, <clears throat> and this is where we, this is where we jump, uh, where we, where we jump off. Jump in. As the gentleman and I were talking in the car, um, <clears throat> I am a constitutionalist. I am a, a, a conservative. Before any of that, I am a born again Christian. I make that distinction for this reason. I was raised in a Christian home. I was raised on Christian philosophies. My political understanding, my community understanding, my world understanding is based on what I was, what I was raised on uh, as the prism through which I measure all things. So I'm the one first, I'm a constitutionalist because I believe in the Constitution as it was written, as it was defined, as it, uh, as it exists, without the, um, without the abrogation of it, without the, the, uh, the undermining and, and disma systematic dismantling of it. That makes me a constitutionalist. I believe that the Constitution is a static document. I do not believe it is a living document, and I am a conservative because I unapologetically subscribe to a philosophy of lower taxes, smaller government. Indeed, these days I think we'd be better off with no government, salting the earth and starting over again. Um, and now we have a record of my having said that. Um, but. I also ascribe to the understanding that the, that, 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 that club, that 535 member club in Washington DC, they are my employees. They work for me. My money keeps them in homes and shoes and puts their children through school. The gentleman, or I, I, I wash my mouth out, that person that occupies 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue is my employee. And it's time that Americans came to understand government is there at our behest. They work for us. They are there because we put them there. We do not put them there and then, and then step back and say, okay, do what you want to do. God didn't do that when he created man. Your family even if, even if you were adopted, your family did not just say, okay, here's a pair of pants, go do what you want to do. So, yes, all of that comes into my conservatism. I'm a conservative in, in, uh, fiscally in, in, on spending issues. I am a conservative socially. And I, and I uh, remain unapologetic on that. I, I allow that a whole lot of people are wrong. That's their, that's, their, uh, that's, their, that's their privilege. They can be wrong if they want. I'm not, I'm right, and I stand on that, pun intended. You had some interesting ideas about the, uh, the beginnings of conservatism. Uh, the conversation, uh, Michael and I had dinner last night and I was saying that I was reluctant to call myself a constitutional conservative because I felt that that, that put more emphasis on the Constitution and less emphasis on the Declaration, which in my view uh, informs the Constitution and must be the beginning of any converse, conversation about the Constitution. I. I don't draw a distinction as such because it's, it's all inclusive for me. So I don't draw a, a distinction. I don't see one without the other. I should also back up and say, uh, pause to, to digress, and that is Joe referenced black conservatism. I don't recognize black conservatism. I don't recognize white conservatism. 
I recognize conservatism. And I think where we get into trouble as a culture and as a country is we have allowed for a nefarious, specious, morally opprobrious individuals. And for those of you that don't understand what I just said, scumbags have infiltrated our system and led us down a path of thinking that we are separated by melanin content. We are not. We are Americans. And until we are Americans first, sans color, S-A-N-S -S, sans color, we will continue to have problems. We will continue to be divided because it is, if we're hyphenated, and I correct people, I, I was on C-SPAN, I spent the last two weeks, two and a half weeks, doing uh, Neil Cavuto, everything from Neil Cavuto to Bulls and Bears to you name it uh, on uh, um, C -Sp or, um, uh, Fox Business Channel. Uh, if, if, if I, and I stop them, they'll say, African-American. Well, I'm not African anything. I'm an American. I'm not a minority. I'm an American. If there are 300 plus million Americans here, how in the good name of all that's sane can I be a minority? I'm not the minority. The guy that just came over here, or, you know, that just, that, just, that just flew in, he's a minority because he came from another country. When he goes through the legal process, he, she go through the legal process and step forward legally, they will become part of the majority. So I, I, I approach things with that mentality. And when we talk about conservatism from once it came, I, I look back um, the early 70s. I was president of my, uh, of my college student government. Okay, before and, you jump in there, does race matter, though? Race only matters if it matters. And it matters because people allow it to. Listen, I own the business. Um, and my business was, well, let me put it this way. Out of the huge, uh, the, the, the great number of, of clients that I had, only seven, I had only seven black clients. I was in finance, insurance and finance. And um, I had seven black clients, a school and some others. But I can assure you of the volume of my clients and the businesses that I dealt with that were my clients, not one of them got up in the morning and said, honey, you know, I'd really like to have an African-American African take care of our retirement fund. They got up in the morning and said, I want the person that's going to handle this money the best and make sure at the end of the day we have something, we have this, and we have this, and we have this. So color to me doesn't matter. And because it doesn't matter to me, I make it easy for it not to matter to you because I'm not thinking that you get up in the morning and say, gee, what can I do? to hold back a black person. I hardly think that's your first thought getting out of bed in the morning. Maybe I'm wrong. If it is, feel free to say so. We'll discuss it. I've heard it. that there are meetings, though. But, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, race doesn't matter. And, it, again, I, you know, going back to the early 70s, as I, as I was president of my student government, I had two members of my board. Um, that wanted to make race-based political statements. And we had uh, no small amount of discussion, frequent discussion, because I did not. It was a, it was a turbulent time. We were just coming through the 60s. Vietnam, uh, the vets were coming home. Uh, it, was, it, was still a, it was still a turbulent time, both domestically, socially, and, uh, and, and, of course, politically. But I looked at the Constitution, and I was a young mind. I had, I had left an Ivy League school. I was accepted at an Ivy League school, and I decided I didn't like it there. I left and went to a community college and started my career there. It was the smartest thing I ever did, but I digress. The thing is, is that I began to think and weigh this thing called constitutional. 
and the Constitution. And I realized very quickly that the Constitution was what was important to me, not the Democrat Party, and it's Democrat, not Democratic, it, not the Democrat Party, and not the Republican Party, it was the Constitution. And when we look at Dr. King, Dr. King said, I have a dream. His dream was grounded in the American dream. His dream was based on the Constitution. Somehow, that part of his speech is lost. But Dr. King believed in the Constitution. I've had conversations with, with, uh, with Ward Connerly, and uh, he speaks of, uh, of um, uh, Mr. Reagan, President Reagan, and the, 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 the thought that should we have um, had a Civil Rights Act signed, and looking back in hindsight, I'm, I can see the argument for us not needing a Civil Rights Act because the Constitution had everything we needed there. It was a, vile, it was a, it was a blatant violation of the Constitution that allowed for, for, for slavery, for Jim Crow, it was a violation of the. It was a violation of the Constitution. It wasn't irrespective of the hearts and minds and, and the philosophy of men. The Constitution was violated. I believe if we stand on the Constitution, that I should say, I believe we stand on the Constitution. That is from where we govern, and that in that time period is where, where I began to think and focus. Now. Then came Clarence Thomas. Now we jump, we fast forward way ahead. And as I watched Clarence Thomas and all of this going on, and I was living in, in Washington uh, during the Carter years. I remember 70% uh, uh, marginal income tax. I remember turning the thermometers down and the fuel lines and so forth. I remember all of that. Um, and, but through the Thomas years, we started hearing this thing of the yeah, constitutional, constitutional. We started seeing more of the so-called black conservative, and that label took, uh, took, um, took hold and, and, and moved, uh, moved forward from there. And then we come into uh, the Reagan years, and then we come through the Reagan years into um, the, the, um, the uh, uh, mid-90s, into the early 2000s, and Bill O'Reilly's talking about being a constitutionalist, which I'm not sure which constitution that is, but it's certainly one that I, that I haven't read. Um, but I, 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 I've looked at all of this, and I've pretty much dated myself now, too. Um, but I started to look at all of this. Nothing dissuades me today from how I was raised and what took place for me in 1971 and 72 when I began to pay attention to the Constitution. And, and study and read and look at what that said. My, the transmogrification, the, 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 um, um, the, um, uh, the transition for me has not been a transition away from the Constitution. It has been a transition to, even, to embrace it even more because of the brilliance of this 16-page this 16 document. 16 pages, people. That's it. It wasn't 2100. It wasn't 1700 that no one read. 16 pages. You talk about conservatism, and I've said, I'm not a black conservative. I'm a conservative. We talk about ancestry, and I've been accused of, uh, of uh, being ashamed of my, my, my ancestry and, and of my race. Well, how can I be? Booker T. Washington, the, the gentleman that was responsible for the first open heart surgery from Johns Hopkins, his name escapes me now, uh, the person responsible for, um, for uh, 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 inventing the traffic light, the woman that's responsible for inventing the ironing board that my mother used and all of your mothers used, they're all black. 